Welcome to the Indie Film Hustle Podcast, episode number 52. It's about 2% movie making and 98% hustling. Orson Welles. Broadcasting from the back alley in Hollywood, it's the Indie Film Hustle Podcast, where we show you how to survive and thrive as an indie filmmaker in the jungles of the film biz. And here's your host, Alex Ferrari. Welcome, my indie film hustlers, to another episode of the Indie Film Hustle Podcast. I am your humble host, Alex Ferrari. Don't forget to head over to freefilmbook.com. That's freefilmbook.com to download your free film audiobooks from Audible. And today's show is sponsored by Twitter Hacks. How to get 10,000 true fans in 10 weeks. If you guys are interested in trying to build up an audience and build up a social media presence, this is a big, great beginning course to teach you how to really leverage Twitter. So head over to twitterhacks.com. That's twitterhacks.com. So I wanted to do an episode, guys, on the five lies of film distribution. These are myths, if you will, that I feel that a lot of filmmakers are sold, and I wanted to clarify it and hopefully do some good today and get some clarification on some of this stuff. So first myth, you see that distributors are calling you and emailing you because your movie is almost done or in production or about to be done and, and finished, and they want to see it. They want to hear it, and you're like, oh my God, how they find out about me? I'm, I'm so special. All I got to do is just send it to them, and I'll get a distribution deal. Well, as I'm going to say this word a lot in this episode, wrong. Generally, if you put your movie in the trades, in any of the trades, Variety, Hollywood Reporter, or so on, um, film distributors are always scanning those, always putting them on a list, putting these film projects on the list, and they're going to call you. You're in the trades, they're automatically going to cold call you just to see what's going on. They, they'll always call you, so don't think you're special by doing this. Now, one big mistake that a lot of filmmakers make is when they do get these calls and they do get these emails, they're so excited. They think that, oh my God, I'm going to I'm gonna make a fortune. They're going to pay me a lot. I'm going to just do what they say. And they ask you, hey, can you send me a copy of the movie so we can screen it? And then a lot of filmmakers will send a DVD or a Vimeo link or something like that, which is the kiss of death. You never, ever, ever want to send a distributor a DVD screener or a, a Vimeo link or something else before it has premiered in a festival or in a some sort of premiere where you've kind of unveiled this, this project. No film, to my knowledge, has ever gotten theatrical distribution based off of a DVD screener or a Vimeo link. So please be very careful with that myth. Myth number two, which is personally one of my favorite myths, is that you're just an artist. I'm a filmmaker. I... I just want to tell stories. I just want to, the, to create my art. And I don't have to worry about the business. I don't have to worry about marketing. I'll just have somebody else worry about that kind of stuff. Well, once again, wrong. There are some filmmakers that are lucky enough to partner with a great producing partner like uh, Ron Howard and a Brian Grazer or a Quentin Tarantino and Lawrence Bender back in the day when they were working together. I'm not sure if they are, if they're not anymore. But this is the exception and not the rule. Most of us filmmakers out there are not going to partner up with this amazing producer who's going to handle all the business and he's just going to write you the checks when you get when the money comes in and he's going to handle all the marketing and you're just going to be sitting back and creating. These are very very rare scenarios. You have to understand all aspects of this business from the marketing to the business size to the contracts to all that kind of stuff. The more you understand about the business the better chances you are of having success in the business. If you don't understand this very crucial, important part of the filmmaking process, which is the business of the show business and the marketing of that movie, you will be doomed to fail. All right? Myth number three. My movie's in Sundance. All I have to do is show up and I will collect that fat check and my dreams of being a filmmaker are now achieved and I could just start waiting to get those job offers from the studios and just make movie millions and millions of dollars off this movie that I just made. Because I know you guys just probably listened to all of these sales that went on at Sundance this year that Netflix and Amazon and Fox Searchlight and all this you know spend 17 million, 10 million. And you're like, well all I have to do is be at Sundance. Well, first and foremost, this year was extremely unique in the way the movies were sold. 
I know of multiple movies, multiple movies that have gone into Sundance, that I've worked on, gone into Sundance, uh, uh, Toronto, South by Southwest, Tribeca, Cannes, all of the big festivals, and did not get a distribution deal. Even after winning festivals of that magnitude, did not get a, a distribution deal or barely made their money back on the movie. You know why? Because it all depends on the movie. Yes, having a winning Sundance movie does open doors, but it doesn't guarantee any sales. There's a lot of great art house movies that came out of Sundance that have never been seen or have not been sold in a, in the proper way because they don't have the audience. The audience is too small. Wonderful piece of cinema, not a marketable product. So don't think just because you got into one of these big film festivals that you are set. My friend, it is the beginning of a long journey. Even if you are lucky enough, one of the 13 in competition for Sundance out of the 30,000 that submit, that's awesome, but it does not guarantee success. So trust me on that one. Myth number four, guys. So I didn't get into Sundance. I didn't get into Tribeca or South by Southwest or Tell You Right or any of these other big festivals. Uh, but I'm submitting and I'm getting accepted into all these other kind of second tier, next tier film festivals. So obviously all I have to do is show up and I'll get a distribution at one of those festivals, right? I hate to break it to you, but it is hard enough to get a distribution deal at Sundance or at a Toronto Film Festival if you're an independent film, let alone trying to get a distribution deal at a small, very, very small film festival or a second-tier film festival that all those distributors were at the main big festivals are not at that one. So chances of you getting a distribution deal at a second-tier festival is very, very slim. What you can do at this point, though, is start building up the pedigree of your film with all these film festivals. So you get press coverage, you get quotes from critics, you get as many awards as you can. And that tells the world and it tells distributors that this is some movie that should be looked at. This is a movie that's getting attention. So you start building that pedigree up. You start building up that the image of your film, this this bigger than life thing. And that's what those festivals are amazing at, not only for exposure, but to get all those, the press coverage, the quotes uh, from critics, all that kind of stuff. And that's what it takes. It takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of energy, but you have to be able to do this as well. It is just as creative, guys, to be marketing a film in a lot of ways than it is to make a film because I guarantee you the creative process behind the insanely great marketing campaign that was Deadpool. And if you guys have not heard me on my my social media uh, and tweets and Facebook, for God's sakes, if you haven't seen Deadpool, go out and see it now. It is the greatest superhero movie I've ever seen. Okay, maybe not ever seen, but definitely one of the most fun job, fun films I've seen in a long, long time and one of the most out-of-the-box films I've ever seen uh, in this genre, in the superhero genre. But the marketing campaign for that movie was brilliant and it took months. The creativity involved with that, I argue, was as, as important as creating a great, great product as well. So the creative process should be equal on both sides. The movie and the marketing and the business side they have to be shared. It is part of the process and you have to understand both sides of it in order to succeed. And the final lie, guys, myth number five. You know what? Screw the traditional distribution model. The hell with them. I'm going to go my own way. I'm going to self-distribute this movie and I'm going to make tons of cash selling to directly to my fans, to my audience, sell ton, make a ton of money selling DVDs and VODs and stuff like that. Well, I hate to break it to you. This is one of the scariest of all the lies because you can tell yourself this and you can go down this road, but selling a movie yourself is very, very difficult. I'm not saying it's impossible because we preach in Indie Film Hustle uh, that you should go down the self-distribution path, but we also show you that there is strategies, plans, a planning to goes into all of that. You don't just you know, throw it up on VHX and like hope people show up or throw it up on Vimeo Pro and hope people show up. There is a long process of building an audience, engaging with that audience, finding out what they want, working with that audience and then selling the properties. You know, out of the 5,000 movies or features that were made, uh, out of every 5,000 movies, let's say, 20 of them make any serious money out of 5,000. 
generally because people don't take the time or don't uh, they uh, completely underestimate the amount of work it's going to take to make real money with a movie. Now, with that said, if your budget's ten thousand dollars, you can make a good you can make a good return selling your movies directly to your fans. And that's if you've done a good job. If you're and if you made a budget of a million dollars and you, you're going to be strictly on online and DVD sales by yourself, my friend, I wish you the best of luck. It hasn't happened yet. I haven't seen anyone do it yet, um, except for a few documentaries. But they were so strategic on the way they did it. It's very, very difficult to do, and it's a very lottery ticket mentality, which is something we and and I completely preach against. Do not think about the exception, uh, but and. But think about the rule. Think about what everybody else has to go through. And if you're lucky enough to get the exception, fantastic. But plan plan for the worst and hope for the best. That's what I always look for. And that's what I always tell everybody in production in general. So we'll be right back after a word from our sponsor. And now back to the show. If you're going to go down this road, guys, just make sure you have a tremendously good strategy plan. You've built up that audience. You've taken time. But this is going to take a lot of time and a lot of work. And there's no guarantees down it. I mean, right now I'm going through this with um, with Anya. I'm starting to figure out where we're going to go with this movie. And if you if you join our uh, membership program uh, at IndieFilmHustle.com forward slash full access. Sorry. Sorry for the plug. Um we're going to be we're having these discussions right now me and Paul are having these discussions about like okay do we want to go after uh big names for the movie are we going to try to do big names for the movie are we going to try to go more in conventional um ways of casting to see if we can leverage social media or self distribute ourselves or you know how do we package this how do we angle this story you know and how do we angle this product this movie that we're going to put together so these are all questions that are 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 being answered as we speak right now so um, if you join uh, IndieFilmHustle.com forward slash full access, sign up for it and we will email you as soon as we're ready to launch the membership site, which will be hopefully up in the next three, four weeks or so uh, we're, as we're working things up. But all this information, all these kind of questions are answered in, uh, in that in that membership uh, course, not course, but in that membership group that we'll be able to be able to talk and have this kind of communication with. But it takes a lot of work, guys, and I'm going down this path myself right now with Anya, so it should be interesting. On a side note, guys, I know a lot of you like think of like home video is like, oh, no, who wants to go to home video? Who wants to go to home video distributors? You know, there's no money in home video. DVD market's dying up. You know what, guys? Last year, it made, I think, $17 billion, the home video market. $17 billion with a B. Not million, billion with a B. So home video is still also another place where you can go after and go after those distributors. It doesn't have to be theatrical only, guys. There's over 100 um, distributors that are strictly home video. They'll get you in Walmarts. They'll get you in Best Buys. They'll get you on Amazon uh, and and, and get money for your movie. So don't underestimate the power of home video. It's still a very viable option, guys. You know, I, I see so many filmmakers who kill themselves to make their films but have absolutely no idea on how to recoup their money. No idea how to make money, how to sell that movie. They just, they just kind of throw it out there and hope for the best. And they've spent a year or two or three working on this movie, their opus, their film, and they can't figure a way out to sell it, how to make money, how to recoup it, how to actually make a living doing what they love to do. And that's why I created Indie Film Hustle. That's one of the reasons why, because it frustrates me so, so much that I see my my fellow independent filmmakers not making it, not able to sell their product, not able, they spend years wasting away on a project and not understand the end game. So please, if you're making a movie, understand you have to know the marketing. You have to have a distribution plan in pre-production. While you're casting, you have to understand this kind of stuff in order to be successful and sell your movie, recoup your money, and actually make money. What a shocking concept. Actually make money doing what you love to do. So it's a lot of work, and it takes a lot of time. But if you're serious about trying to make it in this business, these are things that you're going to have to do. So I hope this episode was helpful for you guys. I wish I would have had this kind of conversation or understood this kind of these concepts when I was working at starting out as a filmmaker. 
So and now that I'm I'm getting ready to do my first feature film, it is very in front of my head of like, how am I going to sell this movie? Who am I going to sell it to? How are we going to get it out there? So I hope this episode was helpful to you guys in that fashion. So go get them, guys. Don't forget to head over to filmmakingpodcast.com. That's filmmakingpodcast.com and leave us an honest review of the show. It helps us out a lot and really helps us get the word out on Indie Film Hustle so we can help more and more filmmakers get their movies made, sold, and rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. So keep that hustle going, keep that dream alive, and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for listening to the Indie Film Hustle podcast at IndieFilmHustle.com. That's I-N-D-I-E-F-I-L-M-H-U-S-T-L-E.com. Are you guys still here? Oh, you guys are still sticking around for the Easter egg. Well, as you know, and if you guys are true Indie Film Hustle fans and part of the tribe, you know that occasionally I will throw in an Easter egg on one of my podcasts. And this week's Easter egg is a coupon code for Filmmaking Hacks, my filmmaking course that I have up on Udemy, where I'm going to give you guys a code for 15 bucks. It retails for 300 or 297 right now, but I'm going to let it go for 15 bucks. So whoever listens to this, you've got a few weeks. I'm going to leave it up. It's going to be a little hidden gem. Anyone who hears this, actually, you know what? I'm going to leave it up. Well, I don't know if I'll leave it up forever, but I will leave it up for a while. Um, so if you hear this, uh, just go to IndieFilmHustle.com forward slash FF hacks 15 that's indiefilmhustle.com forward slash ff hacks 15 thank you guys for listening thank you for staying with me on this entire journey uh and being a real true fan and listening all the way to the end i appreciate it and guys do me a favor spread the word spread the word about the show spread the word about the site anything you guys could do to help me out and get the word out on this and everything that we're doing at any film hustle greatly greatly appreciated so Thanks, guys. Talk to you soon.